I just bought a bunch of Bitcoin and this is the first time that I've bought Bitcoin in a very long time. I bought it spot and I want to tell you why. The chart isn't that good if I'm being totally honest with you guys and I'm going to dive very deep into this. You guys know the deal. This is the channel where we cut out the bullshit. We get straight to the meat and potatoes of what's going on. I'm going to be telling you why I did this, why it's still not perfect and I want to talk to you about a few other things. But first of all, ladies and gents, today 13, yesterday 12, last week 13, the mo last month 24. Ladies and gents, we are ridiculously low in terms of fear in this market right now. And we haven't been this low consistently in the last year at all, right? Last time we had a few little spikes down. This was in the, you know, June, May crash of last year. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of dipped down into these levels, but we recovered back up. We were kind of fine. We were hovering around, you know, just normal fearful. No, we we're in extreme fear on every single time frame right here. Um, and it's not just that, you know, we have this I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in just a second. If you're excited for that, do me a favor and smash up those likes. First video back in seven days. I'm out in Monaco right now. Uh, really, really cool stuff going on. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't been seeing it. But uh, what I want to talk about now is, is what's going on with Bitcoin on this chart. We are slowly trending down. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. This is not the right pattern to draw. Let me zoom in even further so I can draw this accurately. Um, we are slowly trending down. Uh, and if you watch this channel regularly, if you have been hitting up that like and subscribe button, and you know the deal with this YouTube channel, uh, then you are going to know what I'm about to say next, which is that these are generally bullish patterns. And the reason they're generally bullish patterns is because what we have over here is a very quick drop, followed by a much slower drop. Uh, and that is potentially... Uh, a representation of the momentum shifting in the market. Whereas previously, the, mo the momentum in the market was very strong to the downside. It was overwhelmingly bearish. It's now not that bearish. Um, we can see this with the RSI very well. This is another great way to visualize it, right? Uh, a lot of people, they don't use the RSI correctly because they haven't been taught correctly. But here I am fixing that problem. Um, the RSI right here is a, uh, is a show of relative strength. It's the relative strength index. And so if you see the RSI trending up, that is a sign that the market is getting stronger. So we've seen this right here, whereas the market was very weak right here, and we fell into extreme levels of being oversold down to a reading of 10, which I haven't seen for a long time on the four hour time frame. Um, you know, we did manage to climb back up, showing us that we're just not as we don't have as much of an absence of strength, which you can interpret as being weakness, we don't have that much weakness. Uh, right now, as we did previously, we're basically hovering around neutral levels right now, ladies and gents at a reading of 47. You can actually see it this time because I don't have my face cam on. Um, and so this to me is a beautiful sign that the market could be getting ready to potentially break up, right? I mean, <clears throat> put it this way, guys. If the bears did have enough strength, I think they probably would have driven us lower by now. I think there's a good argument to make for that. I'm still going to talk about why we might drop down. Look, I'm not I'm not completely look, even if I've done something, even if I've taken a position in the market, it doesn't mean that I'm now completely closed off to the idea that I might have made the wrong decision. Making the wrong decision is totally normal as a trader. And my God, the sooner you accept that, the sooner you're going to start making a lot of money. So please, do yourself a favor and accept that you're going to lose money sometimes. But uh, th this is the thing where we've got this beautiful bullish pattern right here. We've got the RSI telling us that, you know what, we're not actually that bad. We're not that weak anymore. Um, you know, and, and the other thing is because we've been basically holding these levels for quite a while, we've lost a lot of our bearish indicators, right? The uh, the one hour time frame was overwhelmingly bearish, um, you know, basically as uh, recently as basically the middle of this month, so about 14, 15 days ago. But since then, it's pretty much become neutral. We don't have an Ichimoku cloud here anymore. You know, we don't we don't really have anything going on with the moving averages on the one hour time frame and on the four hour time frame. There's just not much going on. We are getting repeated rejections, but we're not getting strong rejections, right? I mean, if you take a look at this from, you know, high to low, it's a 5% drop. It's just not the same, right? Over here, for example, we had a 22% drop over here. We had, you know, it's slightly uh, bigger than the first one, 7% drop. But after that, we're just not dropping by that much. Okay, this one was 8% uh, and, and so on. It actually varies quite a bit. But if you measure it from the uh, from the EMA ribbon, we're just not finding that much resistance. And crucially, the EMA ribbon is closing off. We, we had a big spread right here and we don't really have any spread at all right now. You cannot see each individual moving average line, which tells us that we've lost 
lost momentum again on the four hour time frame as well. We've lost momentum on the one hour time frame. Look, we haven't had a proper spread on the one hour time frame since basically, you know, again, mid May. Um, and, you know, on, on the four hour time frame, similar picture. Now, daily. Daily is not great, my bad. Let me go back to this page. What am I doing? Daily is not great. Daily, we do have a big spread and we have a big, big area of resistance. But what I'm, you know, what makes me not so worried about this right now is that this resistance area, uh, you know, basically starts a few thousand dollars higher than where we are right now. I mean, if we take a look at this, the bottom EMA right here, by the way, this is new, I haven't seen this before, uh, starts at $30,700. So we're still, you know, 1.7k below that, it's about a 5% swing. Uh, but it stretches all the way up to the mid $30,000 range. And I think that's where we could be going at least. Um, this is the next kind of area of resistance. If you look at my yellow box right here, this is uh, pretty much the top of the resistance range that I've drawn. I think that you can definitely make an argument for 37, 38 as well. This is where we've seen a lot of key reversals. Look at this reversal right here, guys. Do we even give this kind of thing enough credit? Because the market formed a beautiful rally up, in fact, an unsustainable rally up. And when it corrected down, it fell down to no less than 37,500 and it managed to rise up massively to 53K. I don't want to ignore support levels like that. You know, if, if this kind of level is triggering such a big support hit, I don't want to ignore that. So I don't want to ignore it as resistance as well. And what I'm saying here is that, you know, in terms of the market potentially causing pain, right, we've got a lot of people giving up just totally just don't want to be in the market anymore whatsoever. And that's all at a time where levels of our fear and greed are so, so low. You know, to me, that makes this, you know, just scream the opportunity to potentially look to take some positions on. I want to talk to you about what some of the uh, uh, long and short ratios and so on that we've been seeing in these markets are. But uh, very quickly, I want to make you guys aware of this right here. PalmSwap is a decentralized platform where you can trade uh, using up to 10x leverage. And this isn't the interesting thing. The interesting thing is that they have a test net. A test net, for those of you who don't know, this chart isn't going to load up. But a test net, for those of you who don't know, is a platform where you can trade without real money. Money. You don't need to put in real money uh, so you can practice, but in doing so, there is a prize pool available. So they're trying to launch this platform now, uh, and, and there is a prize pool available if you're trading on this test net, depending on the results you have. There's actually a leaderboard right here. You can see it. It's uh, it's all decentralized, right? So you don't deposit money onto the platform. This is connected straight to your MetaMask. Uh, there's going to be some links down below. You can check them out. Leaderboard right here shows you a little bit of what this looks like. We've got some information on the kind of prizes available. These tokens do have some utility uh, as well, and you, you can read about this later on. Uh, you guys know I'm not big on tokens, but I have invested in this one. Uh, I, I just think they're going to do well. So, you know, do with that what you will. I'm not trying to shill anything, but I've invested in it myself. Uh, you know, and, and you can see kind of what we're looking at here. This guy's uh, potentially looking to, uh, to gain some of these uh, palm tokens. This is very confusing because uh, they use a full stop instead of a comma. Uh, but this means 100,000. So <laughs> you're not getting 100 palm tokens in first place, you're getting 100,000. So uh, some pretty cool stuff here. Decentralized exchanges, uh, I think are going to turn out to be really big. And, um, and, and so I want you guys to keep an eye on it if you prefer that. The great thing with decentralized exchanges is, uh, I mean, less things can go wrong. More things can go wrong in other ways, but uh, you know, when when you don't have to rely on a third party, for example, you don't have to worry about your exchange getting hacked or having downtime or being corrupt in some way. There's just less of those kind of issues. Uh, so well worth checking out. It's still you know a relatively new concept, but if you basically can paper trade and practice and get paid for it. Ladies and gents, I don't know. I don't know what you're wasting your time for. So check it out. Uh, but this is the thing. Let's just take a look at these uh, Binance longs and shorts. Uh, I'm very curious to see where these are at. Let's wait for this to load up. This is the wrong page. I'm very sorry. Coin glass is the one that I wanted to look at. We are starting to see this shift a little bit, right? Uh, oh, wow, my bad. This is the wrong time frame. Uh, let me go into the 24 hour time frame. Uh, we are starting to see these shift a little bit. Binance still staying mostly, I'm sorry, Binance over here still staying mostly neutral. A lot of the bigger exchanges are, but we're finally starting to see quite a significant shift on some exchanges right here. Bitfinex, Deribit, uh, you know, we're starting to see them dropping a little bit. Didex, uh, this is another decentralized exchange, by the way. Bybit still, and it's, it's exchanges like Bybit that you want to pay attention to because they're bigger, uh, still leaning bullish. 
Uh, Binance kind of leaning bullish as well. They're both hovering around that 51% area. So we haven't flushed it all out yet, but we're so close to neutral levels now compared to where we were before. Uh, and you know, I think this is a representation of where people are feeling sentiment wise. I don't want to pay too much attention to this data because it can be misleading. And the reason it can be misleading is this is taking into account good traders as well. Uh, you, you don't, you don't want to be looking at what the good traders are doing. You want to look at what the bad traders are doing uh, and, and then do the opposite. So, um, you know, th this is why I'm more interested in the fear and greed index. You know, good traders are never fearful and they're never greedy. Uh, it, it's just a fact of the market. You know, if, if you're a good trader, uh, your mindset will be such that you can't experience fear and you can't experience greed. If you don't know what that feels like yet, uh, <laughs> you need to get there. This is one of the things that I teach inside of Four Flies VIP. We're able to achieve that. I'm definitely there uh, for the most part. I mean, I'm still a human. I still get scared and greedy sometimes, but just not not anywhere near the level of the average trader. I mean, I feel it. I acknowledge it. Uh, I think about it, and then I dismiss it. And 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 that is a skill set which you have to learn. Uh, and if it's something that you want to learn as well, because you like making money in these markets and you'd like to make some more, uh, then that's what we're putting forward for you guys. So just follow these steps on screen if you want to jump inside of VIP. You want to get access to our Four Flies Academy courses where I'm teaching you everything I know about trading and analysis and psychology all in one place. Plus, you get to see me trading in this market as well. If you want to see all of that, uh, then these steps are on screen right here for you. Because uh, this is the thing right now. Again, like I said, uh, you know, th this is the kind of data that I'm very interested in because it's a lot more useful for telling us where the mass market psychology is right now. And you know, I mean, we're basically just hovering around support. It's not a good thing, right? I mean, you know, when we consolidate at support, it's a sign that we might break it. And, and by the way, we've already kind of broken below the support level. But you know, if you look at this previously, we had you know quick, sharp volatile big bounces right look at this big quick sharp bounces right here i mean we're not even closing candles at these levels other than this one instance right here um you know we're, we're just not closing that low we're very quickly recovering up that shows us that the market is strong and, and we know this because if we measure the size of these pumps i mean it's moving up by like 40 percent in this case 23 percent in this case 80 percent in this case moved up by 20 in this case up by 96 before the rally ended. So, um, you know, these are triggering big, big bounces and we don't have that right now. Instead, we're just consolidating, which is a major sign that whereas the bulls should have stepped in, they didn't. Perhaps they couldn't. Um, you know, and, uh, and and so we are consolidating here and that is inherently a very, very bearish sign. So we go back to why I bought Bitcoin and look, here's the thing. It's because people are very fearful right now. It's because I'm, I'm hearing a lot of sentiment of why we're guaranteed to go down to 20 or why we're guaranteed to go down below 20. And look, I'm not ruling it out. Uh, you know, I've still got more money on the side if Bitcoin falls down to 20. And my God, you best believe I'm going to be buying Bitcoin down there if we get it. That is my ultimate ultimate wet dream uh, is, is if Bitcoin comes down to 20k even a little bit lower that would be cool in fact the lower Bitcoin goes below 20k the more likely I am to start looking at selling my Ferrari my Porsche my Tesla uh, both of them <laughs> both the Porsches and both the Teslas uh, you know just so I can keep going all in on Bitcoin because it would be the most obvious trade of a lifetime. Um, I'm hearing people genuinely, seriously, looking me dead in the eye. I'm in Monaco right now with all the crypto YouTubers, right? Looking me dead in the eye saying, we might be coming down to 6K. And I'm thinking, bro, you're smart. I get you. And that's exactly why I think we're not doing anything like that, at least anytime soon. Um, you know, when we start believing ideas like that, that's where I start becoming very inclined to believe that actually, uh, you know, at least a temporary bounce could be due. Now, could we go much lower and enter a multi-year bear market and hit $6,000 and not come back up to 60K until 2028? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah, 100% we could because anything's possible. And, and this is Bitcoin. This is a super, super risky asset class. But at the end of the day, do we have the exact same bloody situation we've had every single time when the market was about to move up in terms of sentiment being shot, in terms of longs and shorts balancing out, in terms of being at a support level? My God, can we just like pay attention to that fact for a second? We're at support. That's where bounces happen, ladies and gents. You know, can we pay attention to those facts? The fact that We've lost so much bearish momentum. Does it mean that we could be due for a little bit of a rally up? Maybe just a little one? Yeah, I absolutely think so. I absolutely think so. If we keep dropping, again, the problem is that we don't have support. If we take a look at what happened on the way up, we just moved up in a straight line. We had two 
brief bursts of consolidation. And I don't really even want to count this one. Uh, so we really only had this area between 22 and 24. But this just wasn't really very significant resistance. And so unfortunately, I can't expect it to be significant support. And that's why on this second day when we dropped below 29k, um, you know, that's why we actually dipped down really far, you know, immediately just with the snap of a finger fell from, you know, basically it's open, uh, you know, at 29,000 down to a low of about 25.5, right? I mean, that's why we saw that kind of price action. It's because, uh, you know, there is no support in this range. And so if what I'm saying doesn't end up happening, we don't end up getting this little rally to the upside. The problem here is there is no support to enjoy. We probably would very quickly drop down, especially now considering that we've consolidated. See, one of the things that happens here, and you only know the answer to this in hindsight. I don't know why people pretend to know this while we're in, while we're in it. Um, either they're uh, deliberately misleading viewers or they just haven't studied markets enough. But, um, you know, these kind of areas when you kind of start leveling out trading sideways, uh, you know, you've got a group of traders that are accumulating Bitcoin. They don't want the price to pump up too much. So every time it hits resistance, they smash some sell orders and trigger a little bit of temporary panic in the market. And then you're right back into a really nice average entry price, which in this case would be about 29,500, something like that, maybe even a little bit lower, um, you know, but uh, what you also get at the very same time is, um, is, 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 yeah, people planning to distribute, you know, they every time the market drops lower, they want to buy it up, they want to make sure that we don't lose these floors, because they know that panic is coming. Uh, and, and you know, the market is going to drop. And so they want to slowly average out a nice exit price, which would also be at about 29.4. And the reason I'm saying this is, you know, these are two very smart groups of people that are doing stuff like this. And you won't know which one was correct until you make the move. If we move up, it's going to be very obvious. This was accumulation. Of course, it was accumulation. We're trading sideways for X days. We haven't really done anything. The fear and greed index, the longs, the support, the, the lack of bearish indicate. You know, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're going to have a little bit of that sentiment. Uh, but if we drop down, well, it was very obvious, right? We were at support and so on. So the reason I'm, I'm pointing this stuff out to you is to show you that right now is a time where this next move could be pretty explosive. It's probably, if we move down, it's probably going to be more explosive, exclu I'm sorry, explosive than if we move up, but it's still potentially looking to shape up to be very explosive nonetheless. And I just want to make sure that we are aware of that because at a time like this, where we're in these markets, when people are very, very uncertain, uh, you know, I like to be a little bit more of a contrarian. Uh, you know, I like to uh, keep a distance from what's going on on the battlefield, uh, you know, retain a little bit more of a bird's eye view. Uh, and what that's done for me right now, it's the same energy when I bought Tesla at $36 pre stock split. Um, you know, it, it, I'm seeing way too much bearish sentiment. Bitcoin didn't automatically become a worse technological you know, thing. It's 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 not a weaker piece of tech. It's it's not it's not technologically inferior today compared to where it was at sixty five or six k. Uh, you know, it, it's um it's getting better every single day. Uh, and, and I think these are facts that people just don't want to look at right now. Um, you know, I'm totally willing to take the hit. If we drop down, I'm just going to buy more. But, uh, you know, like I said, you know, at the moment, I, I, I've been saying that I wanted to buy Bitcoin uh, pretty much since like around the I don't know, probably around these levels around this range right here uh, is where I started to say that I want to buy Bitcoin. It was around here that I warned that Bitcoin could crash massively. Uh, it was right over here where I changed my mind and thought we were going to $80,000. Um, and then it was right over here again, where I changed my mind back to being bearish. Uh, and, and, and pretty I mean, I, I don't want to say bearish, but definitely expecting that we could drop very, very low. This is where I started to want to buy Bitcoin. Uh, and, and this is where your boy pulled the trigger. Um, so just putting all of that into perspective for you guys. Once again, uh, you know, VIP is new about this when I did it. I'm already in a small profit. I don't want to talk too much about that. Uh, but if you do want to get all the updates on what's going on inside of VIP, then these are the steps on screen right now to join just one more time. That's the first link in the description down below. Then the at four flies button at the bottom of any post inside of four flies gold and then send message to ask me how to join uh, right there. We'll get back to you very, very soon. This is a direct chat with me, by the way, I can see all of these messages. I might not reply, it might be my assistants replying to you. But uh, you can definitely reach out and 
see what's up right there. Uh, you know, I don't want you guys to be ignoring this right now. I think a lot of people are getting way too caught up in their emotions, their feelings, their fear, their, you know, and, and fear is a big, big emotion. And, and, you know, I mean, things are changing. We're in really, really weird times. But, uh, you know, one other thing that's definitely caught my attention is, you know, look at this rally on the S&P 500. Um, you know, the S&P 500 managed to rally from a low of 3,800 up to a high uh, of 4,150. Uh, that That's a 9% recovery. And it was actually pretty quick. It was within within by the looks of it about a week i don't think i drew this correctly let's see um okay okay about four days so you know i mean pretty fast pretty fast and at the same time you know look at what happened to the dollar i've been calling for this for a while saying that we need to get a bit of a drop on the dollar we finally got it and this drop came in pretty quickly now it might not keep dropping, but a 3% drop for the dollar is absolutely enormous. And uh, if it does keep on dropping, and, and you know, it's not just the S&P 500, we've got NASDAQ right here as well, um, you know, also bouncing up. NASDAQ actually cleared some local resistance right here. Look at this. This was a little bit of local resistance. If I drop a, a line right here, uh, and then I zoom out onto the one day, um, you know, this level has been technically significant for a while. But if you trace this dotted blue line, which means the current price, we're above it, we're above each of these highs right here, we're above this support, we're above these highs right here. Um, you know, it, it, it's looking well for these conventional, uh, at least temporarily, you know, it, it very, very well could just kind of spring up a little bit, capture some more resistance right here, and then drop lower, you know, and, and, and maybe even sweep the previous low and the S&P 500 absolutely could do that. And Bitcoin absolutely could do that. But what I'm seeing here is the S&P 500 forming a very, very impressive rally, you know, when the S&P 500 moves up by 9%, Bitcoin usually blasts it out of the water. And it just hasn't happened yet. And to me, this is a sign that you know what, I think we might just be in a little bit too much irrational fear. Um, I definitely am seeing this backed by numbers. I'm definitely seeing this backed by people I'm meeting with, people who I would consider to be quite smart. Uh, and, and I have no problem. I have no problem going against the herd. Because like I said, I don't let these two feelings, fear and greed control what I do. Uh, and, and so as a result of that, yeah, uh, I, I feel like I'm doing something that's straight out of a textbook. It might not work. That's totally fine. I'm super confident with it. Anyway, I'm very, very happy with it as it is. Uh, and there you go. That is my take on what we have going on. One more time, uh, take a look at Palm Swap. This is a test net. You don't have to deposit anything. You do have to connect it to, to MetaMask, but you don't have to deposit anything. I mean, you can't deposit anyway because it's a decentralized exchange. Uh, and there are some very, very nice uh, prize pools available right here as well. So uh, again, for you to practice trading and potentially get paid for it is very, very impressive. I'm just curious, by the way, right here. So by the way, you get rewarded if you're in the top 100. I believe that's the case. I might be wrong about that. You only need to make 30% profit to get something, uh, you know, so this is basically free money. Uh, worst case, you can just, you know, throw in some ridiculous, uh, you know, 10x leverage long that might not make total sense. Uh, and, and it might still I mean, you know, to, to beat this, to beat this, you only have to make 3% profit. 3% profit on 10x is going to put you in the top 100. Uh, and, and in this case, you only have to you only have to play a move of 24% on 10x. So uh, I mean, 24 is pretty high, don't get me wrong. Uh, but the point is that there is some good stuff available here. Um, it's worth checking out. So give it a shot. If you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, the fact that you have to use MetaMask does mean that it's a little bit technical. If you if you don't even know what MetaMask is, this is definitely not for you. Uh, but if you're down for it, and again, you, you know, you maybe I, I think a lot of people need to paper trade right now. To be honest, I mean, you know, I'm not going to prescribe anything. I'm not your financial advisor, but um, you know, taking some capital out of the market, um, or or at least out of the active trading accounts, and just learning and practicing for a little bit is probably a pretty good idea. Uh, you know, so. Uh, this could turn out to be something quite, quite interesting. Uh, there you go. I hope you have enjoyed this video. You know what to do. If you have, hit up the like, subscribe, tick the bell, do all that good stuff. One more time, Four Flies VIP right here. Uh, if you do want to jump inside, you want to learn how to manage those feelings, how to cut out the fear, cut out the greed, just be neutral, just be like a robot with this shit. Um, and of course, everything else that goes inside of VIP, there's a long list of benefits. And the only way to see it is by following these steps on screen. Don't bother searching for me online, guys. Please don't look for my stuff 
on Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, whatever, uh, you're only going to find impersonators. as well. To be fair, Instagram and Twitter are a lot easier because I'm verified on them. Uh, this channel is also verified on Telegram, by the way, but there's so many impersonators out there. So the best thing to do for each of my social pages, including Telegram, but also, you know, Instagram and Twitter is just use the links in my description. Uh, that's going to be the only way that you can be absolutely sure uh, that you're talking to me, uh, that you're seeing my content, not a scammer. So uh, there you go, steps are on screen right there. Just click on each of these red boxes in this order. It'll take you less than 30 seconds. You don't have to make any signups or do any downloads or anything like that. Uh, with that though, yeah, you know what to do and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.